Just found my Hawaiian welding cap. Gonna be a good winner. All right guys, so we have something a little bit special today. At least it's special for me because this is something I've been waiting on for almost a year. I mean, maybe not a year, but close to it. At least like nine months, something like that. So um, we've just got a package in, actually two from LRB Aquatics, Lucas. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a quick unboxing. I'm gonna show you guys what I've got. And also I'm going to uh, explain to you how I got these because most of you might be wondering, at least some of you might be wondering, how did you know that, how, how did you get that from Lucas? They've been sold out forever. So I'll tell you that uh, once we get through the unboxing. All right, so I've got two packages here and a puppy dog too who's gonna help apparently. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ov open this one and we'll see what we have inside. Make sure everybody's doing okay. So I, I ordered these like last Saturday or Sunday when I got the notification that they were available. Um, well, one of them I did. And then the other one I was just browsing, um, kind of looking at his site because I, I like his, I like Lucas's website a lot and I would love to have my site be more like his. It's just, it's user friendly in my opinion. But, um, yeah, and then I found something else that I like. So, um, anyways, these were supposed to be delivered. It is the, is this the 17th today? 16th. Uh, it is the 17th, I think. So, yeah, they're delivered on time. It's Friday. They were shipped out on a Wednesday, so they could have been delivered later. We've got a heat pack in here that is definitely warm. It's definitely warm. Let's actually grab a, uh, let's grab a infrared. Oops, so infrared, 95, it's warm, it's not too hot. Um, the thing about Texas is it's, um, it's like 70 degrees outside right now, so be, it can be a bit iffy putting in a heat pack right now um, for Texas. Other places may be, may be better, but those are 72 hour heat packs, obviously. It's still warm, so it's not too big of an issue. I don't want to scare anybody in here. All right, so, oh, I can see what these are. Awesome. All right. So I'm gonna go nice and slow and not scare anybody. Don't stress them out any more than they are. And um, we got one bag here. All right. Okay, so there we go, and the bag is out, and uh, come on, make sure everybody gets away from that, and um, let's see, six, yep, everybody looks good, so um, yeah, no, no DOAs from what I can see. Right, you're not hovering on a dead guy, you're just dogpiling. I think they're just dogpiling there. Yeah, one, two. Yep, awesome, perfect. And I think I even see an extra one in there, which uh, I've never had a DOA from Lucas, I don't think. I might have actually had a snowball DOA, and he had sent me like, he sent me like three extras of the snowballs, or there were at least a bunch of babies, but one had got pinched up here in these bag uh, corners so um, but yeah no DOAs here uh, let's take a quick temp um, 81 degrees which is perfectly fine they'll be that's not that's not bad at all so uh, we're gonna go ahead and place them back in the box put that over them kind of they can slowly come up to temperature and uh, we'll set that packing material aside save that for later for us and then we're going to come over here to this box and uh, get this opened. And, um, yunk. Mm, mm, mm. Got those. And a heat pack. And heat pack is 
98 degrees, just like the band. Um, these guys out. Postage cost a little bit more on this one. You could see, I think it cost more for at least for him. It didn't cost me anymore, but um, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do that on my website. I have a flat rate postage. The more you buy, the same it costs, right? <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, so, so beautiful, awesome. So what we have in here are some rainbow fish, and you can, you can see somebody's woman in there. So we got one male, that's a female. There's a male, we'll mm, take it easy on him, don't want him to freak out. Yep, oh, they're all good. I can already tell, you can feel them. <clears throat> all right, so. Now I'll have to put the, the name up on the screen or remember it, but beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't think he has any more of these. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure about the last one. These, these feel cool to the touch, but 77 degrees, that, that's like just perfect. That is just perfect. Um, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get these into some tanks. Uh, I'm gonna start dripping those, those shrimp get these rainbows into a tank and uh, you know we'll QT him for a little bit just cuz you know I mean we don't want um, you know in case they get sick we don't want um, them to transfer a sickness that they've just caught from being shipped to healthy rainbows in a nice big tank so right. um, yeah we will put them in their own little QT tank for a little bit so anyways, we're gonna get these guys and do some tanks and we'll tune back in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stick them in this 20 long in my living room. I had a male and a female bed in here for a while and uh, this actually got a water change yesterday, so it's perfect. It's, it's got nice clean water in it now. Tons of plants and cover. I'll probably stick a little lid on here just so I don't get any jumping for the first week or so. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take a quick temperature 78 degrees and um, we've already established Oliver nose out go lay down um, got to be stern otherwise they don't listen 78 degrees as well so they're good to go ahead plop and drop right into that tank and that's exactly what we're gonna do so camera down well let's see if we can get a view of everything I guess here yeah, kind of no not really um, hmm. You, you, you kind of get it. So we'll, we'll get that view. And, uh, kind of unplug the mic. Alright, so the sound might be a little bit different. I have to unplug the mic. But, um, temps are the same. We got 78, 78. So we're going to go ahead and do just a straight plop and drop. They're good to go. Or temp and tank. Go. Go down. Good boy. Go lay down, Oliver. I don't want you in the way. Go lay down, Oliver. Lay down. Lay down. But do you want a treat? Go lay down, Oliver. Lay down. Good boy. All the way. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Now stay. Stay. All right. Ah, that is not laying down. All right, we gotta we gotta bribe him. Oh yeah, it's duck jerky. Do you like duck jerky? Do you like duck jerky? Ah, lay down. Ah, lay down. Stay, stay. You gotta stay. You get it if you stay. All right. So, ah, lay down. We're gonna do tank and tub. The, the tank is already at 78 degrees. They're at 78 degrees, so there's no need to float. And again, we can't float because these are breather bags. So when you get a breather bag or a cordon breather bag, it's got the green writing on it. Um, you can't float them because they will it'll, they'll cut off all the oxygen. And I mean, you could probably float them, but people just say you can't. So you can't, right? You can't do it. They'll die immediately. They can't. There's not enough oxygen in that bag. They die immediately. So uh, we don't float them. Um, even though you probably could, we don't. 
Um, we're going to go ahead and do a plop and drop. So, and that's because they're already to temp. If they weren't, you can leave a box open. They'll, they'll get to room temp within, you know, 30 minutes or so. Um, or you put an ice pack on a corner of the bag or a hot pack on the corner of the bag. Like some hot water, paper towel on the corner of the bag. And it'll, it'll bring them up or take them down. So, I'm going to cut this bag open and pour her out. Okay. Boom, she is in. Awesome. One down, two to go. Alright, so now we've got our mail. this tank so Oliver you're not you're not holding up your part of the deal lay down um there's two of them there and uh the third one's hiding so hiding somewhere but uh yeah they're all in the tank we're gonna give them some time to relax um I'll probably get them some frozen brine here in a few hours and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put something on the top of this tank so that nobody jumps out in the next few days. Until they get colored up, happy and comfortable, they will have a top on this tank. I've lost super red plecos, I mean, after putting them into a new tank. So I, I really feel like it's important to put tops on new fish. Alright, so I've got the, uh, the rainbow tank covered. Looks like they're out swimming about. Look, oh my god, look at those fins. But uh, yeah, I've got it partially covered. It's not the best fitting lid. I may redo that. Um, but they're they're all three in here. There's one of them there, and then I also have two katapa leaves. So um, I like adding katapa leaves to every new arrival of fish. I feel like that's like a really good thing you can do for them is give them some tannins, give them the katapa leaf tannins because those are known to be antibacterial and antifungal. So uh, I feel that's one of the best things you can do if you're not going to medicate. And when I get from certain people, I do not medicate upon arrival. That is only from breeders I know personally or just through experience. Uh, that would be Lucas, that would be like Greg Sage, and people like that. Um, I wouldn't throw meds in right off the bat. If I know those fish are kept fairly clean and well, I'm not going to hit them with meds um, right off the bat at least. They may go through some deworming later on, um, like if I feel it necessary or I just want to. Like, if they're going to go in with the Fajaca, I'll give them some deworming meds. But, um, yeah, when I get new fish, I feel that Catapa leaves are a great addition. Unless you see something like a bacteria or fungal, that needs to be treated ASAP, or it's going to get worse and you could kill your fish. So, um, yeah. Seems to be doing fine. We are going to check back in on them and them once they're in their new tanks. All right, so the shrimps we do a little bit different than the fish, of course. Um, I've got a little, uh, you know, specimen container, I believe is what they're called here. Um, I've got my drip line, and uh, I've got a tank here that has been cycling for some time now. Um, it's held a few different things here and there. God dang it, are those? They are. Uh, there's, um... Uh, what are they called? How am I forgetting this? There's um, Daphnia in here, which is great. I get Daphnia and everything. It's just, it's wonderful. I love Daphnia so much. I don't know how I got it anyway. I get it. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's not going to be a huge problem. What I might do is I might throw an Endler or two in here. They'll kind of control the Daphnia and not bother the shrimp so much. I've got a lot of peacock moss in here. I've got two Anubias and a Java Fern. And then just mainly tons of peacock moss that... It's kind of half dead and it's going to need to grow back, but it's fine. It'll be okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I did just test the water too. Everything looks good. So um, what we're going to go ahead and do is 
place these guys in the specimen container and do a drip. So, I want everybody out of there. And we're just gonna cut my scissors at. Cut a hole in this bag. And this is probably like the more, like the trickiest part here is getting these guys all in here because like, there's probably some. There's yeah, there's one in the bag, but like they can go out of water for a little bit. It's not gonna. Yeah, and I got one. I can tell. Come on, little guy. Is he out? Uh, he's still right there. Is he out now? Maybe. Said I really don't like the knots and bags for shrimp. I'm gonna send Lucas, and it's not that it's a problem, I'm just, I think I'm gonna send Lucas a heat sealer so he can heat seal these packages. They're, um, Lucas, if you're watching them, they're like 20 bucks, man. Um, I, this, I guarantee you, this is your biggest risk right here is those, you know, I don't think I've, I've rarely ever had a problem. I might have had a uh, snowball get caught in them once but like your extras exceeded the amount of loss so kind of didn't matter but still it's like the only thing I think I'd ever even worry about is those but I got a heat sealer on eBay for like 20 bucks let's see one two three four five six seven and eight yeah eight shrimps Good to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start dripping. So, put that end in. I'm just gonna siphon it into the bag here for a second. Just kind of clean out anything. I just got done rinsing this in tap, so I want to, uh, yeah, just kind of rinse it out if I can. Then we can tie like a little knot into it, and uh, we're gonna do roughly like an hour long drip, and that's a drip per second. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a TDS meter, check his TDS, and check mine real quick. I like to do this, and I forgot, so. I'm gonna tip this up. He is 175, so his he's running his shrimp tank softer than he's at 175, and then I'm at 286. Oops. Well, it went away. He was at 175, and I'm at yeah. That's like it was at 290, 286. So he's running his shrimp tanks a little bit softer, I guess, or his water's just changes seasonally that's um yep good slow drip we're just gonna let him sit here for um about an hour or two we'll i mean of course we're gonna use our tds meter to actually check tds and uh make sure our tds is matched before we um actually go ahead and put them in so i'm also gonna give him some cover here um, yeah, and we'll just let them drip. All right, so we have been dripping for about an hour or two now. And uh, just gonna get the TDS meter out there at 279. And the tank is at 295. So that's close enough for me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get them into the tank. Now, I did have to pour this off once, that's normal. I'll take the temperature real quick too, but with the TDS is being that close, I'm, I'm sure the temps are the same. But um, I, I did pour off the water once, so that's something you kind of might have to do when you're dripping. If it gets kind of full, pour, pour some off, you know, fairly low down to like an inch again, and then start dripping again. Um, so, Get this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and pour some off and then I'm going to use this little guy here to scoop each one individually and put it into the tank. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and can actually go ahead and like open this up. 
and even just stream it full for a second just to get that much closer on the TDS. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, pour that off and uh, the excess, and then we'll start scooping them out and put them in the tank. All right, so I've got it all poured off. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this plant, some type of Ritala. If that's Ritala uh, Colorado, I actually want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there, and then, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna time lapse me getting them in there because it might take a little bit. All right, so um, this is, by the way, just one of the 10 gallons under my 55-gallon uh, uh, rainbow grow-out living room tank. Next to it, we have uh, some LRB Aquatics Snowball Shrimp. But I, look, you can see all those those eggs in that one. It's that's crazy. Is she upside down? Oh, she is. Crazy. Um, yeah, cool. But um, I, 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 I see a baby. So there's one of the little, little ones that I got. And I think I got about two or three that big. And no, I, I paid for seven and I got eight. Um, there is, oh, it's going to be hard to get through this glare. One in the corner of the tank. Um, this is going to be one of those things I'm going to have to just like check on this tank every, every few hours or so. And, uh, you know, just see if I can't get a shot. Um, there's one of the juveniles right there. And mind you, all of these are like sub-adult adults, you know, like we're talking like, they're not, they're old enough to breed, but they're not old enough to like, they're, they're obviously not his breeders that are making all of the shrimp for him. You cannot be a hobbyist home breeder of shrimp and sell those, otherwise you lose your lines, you can't produce enough shrimp. So, yeah, I don't ask for those, um, and I don't expect them either. Um, you, you get those from importers and stuff because they've had time to grow out, but uh, no, nah, you don't always get them from home hobbyist breeders, unless they just have an abundance and maybe not as many people buying. But, yunk, there's one zipping around. Oh, gosh, the glare. And he's gone, so uh, it's going to be going to be difficult ah there's one right up in the corner there and I don't think we can see it because of glare and bubbles and there he goes there he goes all right so here are the rainbows and these are glossolepis dortii um, now you can see I got a trio for $60 really good deal um, I don't know if they're breeding age, but they are not far. Here's the thing about rainbows. They can breed very young, like two inches. As soon as they sex out, really, they're breeding. So rainbows breed very, very young. If, you know, you want a lot of rainbows like I do, just uh, buy, buy a really good pair from a nice breeder, knows what they're doing with a good line, pay that extra price. Don't go to Petco. Don't go to PetSmart. Don't even go to your LFS unless you have a good one. Find a good breeder and then just get a trio and then breed those and make a bunch. Um, now it's good to breed them more than one time so you don't have just brothers and sisters breeding in the long run. And uh, you know maybe after you know a couple you know spawns go by and maybe you've made some money off of them, try and you know add some more of the same species from another breeder, or the same breeder of a good line, just to make your genetics that much deeper. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and also if you're wondering how I got these blue dreams and you didn't and maybe you didn't even know that they were up for sale, um, I'm a patron of Lucas's on Patreon. I give him a dollar a month which is nothing. Um, I also give Flynn's Fish Forum a dollar a month. There's a few other people I intend to patronize that I just haven't got around to but I will eventually. Um, but yeah, I give Lucas a dollar a month and I was sitting up about a week ago at like 3.30 in the morning and I got a message from my phone from Patreon saying Blue Dreams are for sale. I immediately bought seven because that's what I could afford. So if you would like, I don't know, like I don't know if Lucas is gonna do that all the time. Lucas, I don't even think mentions his Patreon account. I'm gonna mention it for him. If that's something you kind of like want to know, 
I mean, by all means, go give him a dollar or two dollars a month, whatever you can spare. It'll go to a good cause. It's going to help his fishermen. It's going to help you out. It helped me out already. I've been a patron for like a month, maybe two months, maybe I've given maybe two dollars, and I got something that is worth. It's kind of priceless because I'd rather have his shrimp than kind of anyone else's. Because I know him. He's won awards. He's continued to win awards, at least place, you know, um, in you know I think worldwide competitions. So, um, yeah. I, I would just rather have his shrimp than kind of anyone else's. I'm sure there's some other good ones out there, but I really like his and I want to support him. So that makes that really easy for me. So anyways, that's a good way you can kind of cheat and, uh, you know, maybe skip past, you know, the crowd, skip past the line of people waiting on his shrimp, patronize him, and you might be lucky enough to know you know when the next time some of his shrimp go for sale so anyways guys i think that is it for this video um i hope you liked it and i'll see you on the next one